listeners and viewers, welcome to Kaduna State Ministry of Education radio and TV e-learning program designed for our SS3 and other students staying at home due to the coronavirus pandemic. The present administration under the able leadership of His Excellency, Malam Nasur Ahmed El Rufai is positioned as always to ensure that under his leadership, our students are not left behind in all areas of human endeavors, especially education. Kaduna State is the center of learning. Therefore, we want to ensure that our students excel in their forthcoming examinations and beyond. Students and other learners at home are given this opportunity in order to continue learning as education is a continuous process. Different subjects will be taught in this program to assist students to perform excellently in the forthcoming senior school certificate examination being conducted by NECO and WAEC as soon as schools reopen. Teachers making presentations will always provide their names and phone numbers during each presentation and they can be contacted for questions, further explanations and or clarifications. The following numbers and contacts can also be reached for expression of any concern or observation. 090-865-00545 or 080-383-62072 our website is www.education.kdsg.gov.ng. Our email, education at kdsg.gov.ng or education.kdsg at gmail.com. Our YouTube channel, Ministry of Education, Kaduna State. Our Twitter handle, at Kaduna underscore MOE. Or our Facebook page, Ministry of Education, Kaduna State. Stay safe, stay at home, and learn well. Thank you, happy listening, and happy viewing. Good day, viewers, my students. I'm Solomon Kish Tauna. I'm going to teach literature in English. But the topic for today is figures of speech. <clears throat> this is the definition of figures of speech. Uh, figures of speech is the use of a word or a phrase which transcends its literal interpretation. It can be a special repetition, ar arrangement or omission of words with literal meaning or a phrase with a specialized meaning not based on the literal meaning of the word in it. As in idiom, simile, metaphor, Hyperbole, personification, uh, etc. Et I will start with this figure of speech. We have types and their examples. I will start because it has been arranged alphabetically. I'm going to start with alliteration. This is the repetition of consonant sound in a sequence of words in a poetry line or nearby lines. It refers to the repetition of the same sound at the beginning of a word, such as the repetition of the S, T, and the L sound, consonant in Shakespearean sonnet. Example, when to the section of sweet, silent thought, sweet, silent thought is repeated. I summon or remembrance of things past. <clears throat> then, the, the fair breeze blew, the white form flew. Fair breeze, breeze blew is a repetition of consonant words. Uh, allusion, it is a brief reference to an important person, what he, stroke she, said, did or stood for, and a place, an invent or popular phrase or line, say from the Bible, incited into a piece of writing. The writer almost always assumes that the reader will recognize what is being referred in written passages, passage for instance. This, this, a reference to Nelson Mandela, recall freedom, struggle, struggle apartheid in South Africa, or qualitative African leadership in the case may be. To recognize allusions call for, uh, 
calls for fine of knowledge which is shared between the author and his or her readers. Oftentimes, allusions are recognizable by one's reader, but in special cases, they may be drawn from an author's private reading or experiences. In this case, a reader may have to depend on scholar, uh, scholar, scholarly uh, explicators to suggest the source of meaning. E.g., for example, when I refused, he gave me some money. Perhaps he thought I was Judas. This is an allusion to Judas Iscariot acceptance of money in order to betray Christ. What are we talking about? It is linked up with the biblical allusion. It has to link with Bible. And that's why we are quoting Judas Iscariot as an example. I came, I saw, but was rather conquered. This is an allusion to the popular statement credited to Napo General Napoleon Bonabate of France. His remark went this way. I came, I saw, I conquered. Then we have ambiguity. Ambiguity refers to a statement whose meaning is not so clear. One, two, a statement which has two or more possible meanings. In scientific prose, it is considered to be a fault, but in literature, ambiguity may result in humor, reflects the writer's perception of life complicity or in fact enrich meaning or indicates the difficulty of determining the truth e.g. In, Shakespeare, in Shakespeare's Hamlet Hamlet asks grave digger making a fresh grave whose grave is this Syrah? The grave digger responds mine sir Hamlet returns slightly angry I think it is I think it be thine indeed for doubt least in antithesis. These terms refer to the presentation of two opposite phrases or clauses in a sentence to indicate a balanced view. It is the placement of contrasting or opposing words, phrases, clauses, or statements side by side, which more often than not result in parallelism, that is, a similar word, order, and structure in their syntax. Example, willing to wound and yet afraid to strike. That's somebody that quoted it. That's Alexander Pope. Marriage has many pains, but celibacy has no pleasure. Another quote from Samuel Johnson. Man proposes, God disposes. Apostrophe. These terms refer to an instant in which a writer makes a direct address to think of to think or an abstraction uh, pre present or ab absent 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 pers person or entity for example friendly thy name is woman here friendly is being addressed friendly friendly thy name is woman friendly is being addressed then we have death be not proud Though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for doubt, uh, uh, doubt not go. Now, they are now addressing that as part of the apostrophe. We have assonance. This figure of speech refers to repetition of vowels sound. Vowel sound. That is to say, uh, identical or similar vowel sound in stress, stroke, syllables, in a line or nearby lines of poem. This is normally done by a poet, dramatist, or a novelist, just to create some musical effect. What are we trying to say here? When we talk about poet, poet, it has to do with poetry. And then when we talk about dramatist, it has to do with uh, play. And then novelist, it has to do with prose. This is drama, prose, and poetry. That is assonance. For example, we thought of part back how rough it was. The O and E sound, they are all uh, assonance. They are all vowel sound. Let not ambition mock their useful toy. All, all sound. All sound. Then we have diction. These terms refer to a word, 
choice. Good diction means that effective and appropriate words have been chosen by a writer to suit his or her discourse. A writer's diction may be simple, complex, technical, or merely plain. It could be formal or colloquial, abstract or concrete, literal or figurative. As, for example, you see, choice of words, in, it always, we always get it in both the genre of literature that has to do with the common, the concrete, the concrete, and so on and so forth, complex and uh, technical. Then we have... Then we have euphemism. It is the substitution of a mild or less negative word or phrase to a harsh or blunt one. An euphemistic term is used to cocoon something terrifying or disagreeable so that it appears less offensive, somewhat mild or pleasant. E.g., after all the life struggle, the millionaire quietly passed away last night. That is to say, he died. That beautiful lady that has just passed us is very, is every man's wife. That is to say, she is loose or immoral woman. Then we have high Bible or exaggeration. They are both terms refer to a deliberate use of excessive notion or overstatement by a writer for the purpose of creating an impression laughter or humor. For example, even 10,000 oceans cannot wash away my guilt. That's exaggeration. Overstatement. Then, such was her beauty that make men crazy. That her beauty has made men crazy. Then we have irony. This is a mode of expression through work, words, verbal irony or invent or invent. That's in bracket, irony of situation. Convey reality different and usually opposite to appearance or expectation. Some describe irony as saying one thing and meaning another. A writer may say the opposite of what he means. Create a reversal between expectation and its fulfillment or give the audience a piece of knowledge that has a character a character and lack making the character's word yield a meaning to the audience contrary to what such words mean to the character in question zeta example zeta won't fail her examination she doesn't need to read her book before passing it this is an ironical statement it means that it affects the speaker means that Zeta will fail her examination because she does not read her books. Another one, I wish I had your type of teeth when the speaker is mocking the address because of the latter's poor dentition. We have lit lit or understatement. It is a figure of speech which purposely represents something as being less in importance. Than, in really, than it really is. The effect achieved is often ironic or and laconic. For example, a soldier arrests a poem protagonist for carrying a dangerous weapon. Even though all I had on me, that is the protagonist, that even though what I had on me was a pen, that is Femi, Fatoba, Sain, and Time, sign and time. Metaphor. A metaphor converses the similarity between two things by insisting that one thing is another. Note that while the comparison is in a simile, is direct and open than in a metaphor, is usually indirect and implied. What am I trying to say on metaphor? That it is a direct comparison. That instead of using as or like, you say this is what that thing is. For example, Nigeria is an Abiku, an Abiku nation. 
always dying and resurrecting on a daily basis. Fumi is boiling with fury. Talent is as exciting. Genius is a fountain. Metanomy. This figure of speech refers to the substitution of one word of phrase to stand for a word of phrase. Similar in meaning. In other words, it is a statement in which reference to something is done, though, and other things associated with it. E.g., Aso Rock has been criticized for its plans to retain corrupt ministers in its cabinet. Aso Rock is Nigeria's seat of power. That is metonymy. The Crown has refused to recognize the newly elected Prime Minister. That's to say, the crown stand in for the royal family, say of Britain. Onomatopoeia, this is the development of words in a way that such words suggest or echo their meaning or sense of use. Words in English language which easily suggest, suggest their meaning from their sound include bang, boom, tinkle, zoom, crush. All these ones, are, they are words, sound that is linked with words. That's where fountain and you that wobble as ye flow. These are all onomatopoeia. Oxomoron. It is a figure of speech that combines contradictory words to reveal a truth. It places side by side two words that are self contradictory. Oxomoron is similar to paradox, except that while in paradox, the ideas contradict each other. In Oxomoron, these words side by side contradict each other. We have parable. This time refers to a work, a work, a work of art or story involving human being, which communicates a moral lesson. It is a brief and often simple narrative that illustrates a moral or religious lesson. The Christian Bible has many examples, include the Good Samaritan, the Sower, the Prodigal Son, etc., etc. Then we have paradox. To a, this, it is a statement which seems on its face to be self-contradictory or absorbed, yet turned out to make a good sense or be true paradox in similar, it is similar to Ozomoron. For example, coward dies many times before they are dead. They call him a lion, however, in that boxing match, he turned a lamb. Personification, it is a figure of speech which gives the future of human being to inanimate object. You see, death, be not proud. We are now addressing death as if it is a human being. The trees groaned as they fell, groaned, and then death lays its icy hands on king. Icy hands on king. Then we have the pawn, usually referred to as a play on words. It is the use of red or fresh phrases, which although may have similar sound, possess different meaning. Yes. E.g., pastor prayed on the lady until she became poor. Note that the use of pray and rather than pray for, for which pastor are known. Are known. Repetition. Repetition is the figure of speech in which a word, phrase, or idea is expressed more than once in a piece of poetry, a drama, passage, or a prose for the purpose of mus uh, musicality or emphasis. That's the repetition of words. Rhetorical question. It is a question asked. It is a question asked as a way of making a statement, not really because an answer is expected. Should we continue to sing? This is a figure of speech which involves direct comparison between two or unlike things, usually with the words such as like as, though as, etc. I shall flow like. That is comparing them with like and like butterfly and sting like a bee, Muhammad Ali. Then Musa is fat like an elephant. Assignment students, number one, what is the major device deployed in the following remark? At the fall of the house they live in, the widow lost her husband, her sewing machine, and her earring. Number two, what is dominant device, dominant device exemplified in this sentence? I came, I saw, but was conquered. Then, if you want to reach me, uh, you can use this number. You can use this number, 080 340 
0.0467. Let me take it again. Mr. Solomon Kish, the number 080 340 40467.